Hey everybody, let's start 2024 off strong by reintroducing one of our old friends, Tessa Morolin. We've discussed this peptide twice on the channel before, albeit on my old mic, which was of potato sounding quality. So we're going to do good by this one of a kind peptide that's managed to gain FDA approval and give you all the recap you deserve. So Tessa Morolin, as developed by pharmaceutical company Thera Technologies, has gained FDA's stamp of approval in November of 2010 for reduction of lipodystrophy in patients suffering from HIV. So lipodystrophy is an abnormal and metabolically unhealthy redistribution of fat that oftentimes includes accumulation of visceral fat. Tessa Morlin is also being evaluated by Thera Technologies for possible treatment or management of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and often includes a lot of metabolic risk factors as well. It also seems that the company is producing a more potent version to reduce injection frequency and to segue creation of a multi-dose pen injector similar to Ozempic, for instance. So as a peptide that encourages release of growth hormone releasing hormone, tesamorolin, brand name Egrifta, is similar to Samorolin in the sense that by encouraging release of GHRH, we encourage the anterior pituitary to release growth hormone and downstream as we see the liver releases IGF-1 and performs those downstream actions, one of which is to increase the ratio of lean body tissue to adipose tissue, i.e. increase lean body mass. As you'll see with these compounds that are very closely interwoven with pharmaceuticals, tesamorolin is expensive. Additionally, some of the data shown in these clinical trials is that patients involved actually had spikes in fasting blood glucose, especially worse during the first two weeks. And even though it's something to be shown as more of an initial elevation, Decreased insulin sensitivity, even for an interim period, is in my opinion something to keep an eye on and monitor. And as always with these peptides that create an environment characteristic of generalized physiologic growth, we always worry about the risks of cancer. There certainly exist unknowns with regards to long-term use of these peptides. It's always something to consider. That said, this is not medical advice. Please do not take it as such. Any questions or concerns, see your physician. I am just somebody who enjoys making informational, educational, fun videos on peptides. So here's a quick recap on the FDA-approved interesting growth hormone releasing hormone peptide, Tessamorolin. Please leave a question, a comment, an expletive if you feel obligated to. I hope you enjoyed watching the video half as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. I am beyond blessed to be part of this awesome peptide community. However, I do see that 98% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel, so if you get a second, just pound that sub button and let's keep the train rolling. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.